right there. There they are. Hi guys, this is Ben for Ben's RPG Pile, and today we're going to show you how to make a D and D hedgerow maze. So here we go. This is kind of the thing. So the uh, this is a uh, hedge by Miniature Building Authority. Unfortunately, it's uh, no longer in print. Um, it's uh, heavy, expensive, and um, I didn't buy a ton of them. I only bought a few of them. I love them, but uh, I can never make a whole D&D game board out of this. So I'm going to show you guys uh, what I came up with. Now there's some interesting things here with the uh, with the module that uh, we're playing right now, and so let's look at that real quick. So I'll pull this off here. So a lot of environments in uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, Pyramid of Shadows module. Uh, there's a cavern. You guys have seen this plenty of times. So you got your cavern. Um, you got your uh, traditional field stone uh, dungeon. Here's a wall to go with it. Right. You guys see me make plenty of those too. Um, and then there's Egyptian, of course. Good old Egyptian. Here's the wall of Egyptian. But uh, now, on top of that, there is uh, uh, these hedge, these like outdoor hedgerow kind of things. I always think of World War II and Panzer stuff, and I want to say that word. But uh, um, so now there's a fourth environment we have to make. And um, uh, there are options out there that you can use. Um, the BMW, the Cadillac, of course, is. Uh, uh, Dwarven Forge, their master maze. They have a woodland set. This is beautiful. Let's see, here it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. So there are, uh, there are plenty of options um, that you can use. This is great, but this is expensive. Hoo hoo. And so, although hopefully with Dwarven Forge's uh, new approach uh, and their Kickstarter stuff, uh, maybe the, uh, they'll make a set of this that isn't crazy expensive. Although I love these, and I have several sets of these, but it would still be difficult to make this uh, hedgerow stuff using this set even. So we had to come up with something entirely new. And um, I'll try to get this in frame. This is the map that I'm going for. See right there? That's what we're going to make. And the uh, encounter is it's literally called the hedge maze. Uh, but this setting is going to make its appearance in several other rooms in the module. So this is what I'm trying to make, right? There's no cavern or field stone or Egyptian stuff in there. So I had to come up with yet another environment. So this module will put you to the test in terms of what you're going to make as a hobbyist uh, terrain maker. So, all right, let's, uh, let's dig deeper. So like I said, we're going to start with the hedges, right? So... Uh, miniature building authority, great, and I'm going to use these, but I'm going to put these on the outside of the map um, where I can to just show some depth and uh, give it a little more oomph. But uh, I couldn't make the whole maze out of this, okay? So I'm going to kind of slide that away. I'm just putting the old bookie, our heralded wizard, just kind of putting him in here for scale. But uh, next thing is um, uh, there's another uh, company here, and this, these guys are called Legendary Realms. And they were at Gen Con last year, and they made this great pre-painted terrain. Those guys must have cast for weeks upon weeks straight. But um, these are handy, and I bought as many of these as I could. But again, I don't have enough material. Can't use those either. Let's see bookie there. But I still incorporated some of these in the terrain. Next thing is here is this is probably your, one of your best moves. This is uh, the hedge material from Games Workshop great stuff. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of it on hand and I needed to make the board, so um, I did what I could on these, uh, but I I didn't have enough at the time. Um, uh, there's a great blog post on this, guys, so I'm running through this stuff kind of fast, and, and I, I don't mean to do so, but I, I know I'll lose your attention on the video if I take too long. But uh, the blog post shows you how to 
um, make some of this stuff. All step-by-step -step tutorial kind of stuff, so really handy. Um, but basically, I just took a popsicle stick, and then I um, snipped off some of this wire, and you glue it to the popsicle stick. Uh, hot glue is DM Scotty, his weapon of choice. And then um, uh, you then just hot glue on top of this, and then you just put this hedge right on it, and it forms a bond very quickly. So uh, this is great, but if I, again, if I had more time, I probably would have bought a bunch of this and just used this. The other great thing is there's a, a video out there uh, by the Terrain guy, and he shows you how to take um, this material and you essentially use it like a skeleton, and you can form like a whatever you need to make for a hedge. Like I could bend this, you know, and make my hedge kind of thing, and then you just put um, cl clumpier flock. I don't have any in front of me because I never remember to pull everything over for videos, but um, you could just put flock on top of this and that would work great too. Um, uh, so there's a lot of choices out there and I'll have links to train guys stuff um, in the blog post, but uh, that's another option. And I, again, I use some of these too. Okay. And what I uh, netted out on was my brother gave me a box of stuff from the store and it was this 15 millimeter, um, Wargaming stuff, and see, this is just the right height for 15 millimeter. Um, and I was like, "Hey, now we're talking!" And it just dawned on me to use these. And basically, all I did was I um, took the sticks and I covered up that unsightly color with uh, some Craft Smart uh, Campground. Um, there, nice and dark, really a great color. Highly recommended. Uh, but I just put that on there, and then. Um, if I needed to, I flock the bottom just a little bit, but you can see that's perfect. Now, I'm in the game here. These hedges will appear to be about, you know, about that high, right? Maybe just a little bit higher than that. So, but you're all sitting at a table. You don't want things too high because you see, you can't see your, you can't see where the guy is on the other side of the table. So that's not doing anybody any good. So you kind of don't want them this high. Because you don't want to be standing the whole night. Um, I don't know how those war game, uh, Warhammer guys do it. but uh, um, So we didn't do... Uh, this is perfect. Everybody can see. Nobody has to get out of their seat. Um, uh, it, it's implied that it's, you know, high as it should be. So And then the color on here is great too, right? Doesn't it kind of look like the hedge is slowly dying and all that stuff? And it's nice and thick. So this is what I made. And this is what you're going to see... Um, uh, in the game board the most. And then I just snuck a few of these little plants in there for corners, like even DM Scotty made me some some plants. Look at this. Gosh, isn't that fantastic? But I bought these from a, um, a company at Gen Con, um, and then I just took a couple of the ones Scotty gave me and uh, put those in too. But uh, uh, these are going to be our hedges to make armies. So now we're going to talk about difficult terrain. There's a lot of spots on the terrain uh, on this game board and basically um, you try to use that terrain to one, slow them down going through the encounter and then two, you try to push them towards the edges of the um, hedge because I'm going to have some monsters and stuff try to grab them from if they're adjacent to the hedge on occasion. So difficult terrain, they'll try to avoid that sometimes and go around it. And hopefully I'll push them towards the hedge and then trouble ensues. But um, sure, you could take a dry erase marker and create difficult terrain, just exit out and all fine. But I, I saw these in that box, that same box where I pulled all those 15 millimeter hedges. And basically, the guys had made these little rocks, like uh, bunkers, or barricades, excuse me. And, um, uh, you know, they they definitely were just going for quick and easy. And, you know, that certainly works. Again, 15 millimeter, right? Because that's a, although that's not terrible, I guess, when you look at it for a regular D20. But I'm like, hey, I can use these. I'm trying to reuse some of this stuff in my um, games whenever I can. But uh, um, I'm like, okay, I got an idea. I'll cut these up. So there's this handy tool that everybody should have in their terrain-making arsenal, and it's these snippers. 
And man, these things cut everything. They'll cut that wire, they'll cut this wire like butter. And then they'll cut these really quick. And basically, I'm afraid to do it, but let's so I just kind of uh, like so. Don't tell my wife I'm cutting on their cutting board. It's our secret, right? But see, basically, I cut them up like that, okay? And then I use that campground green, and then I use a bunch of flock, and then I figure I'll just put these on the board, and see the minis sit on there pretty good. Right, you gotta make sure the terrain's playable, so if they end their turn in that. But I really thought that a good terrain piece that kind of blended in with the environment would really help raise the level of the board. So let's show you a couple of those. So we clear this off here. No. Oop, too fast. So there's one. <laughs> I posted a Facebook picture of these after I'd put Matt Sealer on them on our Facebook page, um, bit.ly slash Facebook RPG. And uh, people thought that I was making like Rice Krispie treats or something. <laughs> it was a strange comment. But uh, so here they are, right? And I just put a bunch of PVA glue on there um, just so you can kind of see what they for and after. And I uh, put that camp brown green on there to hide this horrible brown ish color but uh, see those look pretty good and they're about the right size and uh, see the miniature sits on there pretty good so I made a bunch of these and I put these in choke points as they were on the map to uh, create uh, more challenges a nice simple flock I used some base craft flock stuff that I had those guys are fantastic you should subscribe to their channel and even though they they're over on the pond in uh, England, um, their shipping's really reasonable, and I order all my flock through them these days. They're, and they're just nice guys. I like working with nice guys. So, um, uh, yeah, those look nice, right? Nothing too crazy. And you see, I didn't go, I didn't go hog wild. I'm always afraid I'm going to overdo my stuff. But I think those are pretty cool. So this is going to be our difficult terrain. Bookie. Okay. okay. So let's talk about some other things that I uh, added to the game board to just give it a little more flair, right? You always got to have the 15 pieces of required flair, as they would say, right? And so um, uh, remember those Games Workshop uh, hedges that I rebased, like so? Well, I made some smaller ones. Um, I took like I had a real long, I took one of those long ones that I had and I cut it into a couple pieces because I wanted to use these as like little indentations and I thought a few of them at a higher, uh, you know, taller view would be cool to put a monster behind if someone's coming around the corner here. So I tried to, I purposely made a couple of these to put as little sticking out points. But, uh, um, so one of the things is uh, treasure. So treasure, uh, if, the, if the party searches really hard, um, in one of the hedges, they're going to find this, I don't know if I can get her to stick here. I had it really, I had it sticking perfectly before. Ooh, weird. Yeah. So um, I'll have this guy um, in one of the hedges if they do a good enough search. And um, uh, this would be kind of an old decaying body kind of thing, right? But in there, I'm going to put this pendant. There's one of the old Paizo um, item cards. And uh, it's going to be a, a pin of fighter's reserve. And... Um, I always say where they got it and all that stuff, but uh, it'll give them a daily po power, um, and they can do a fort save for no damage. Um, the DM rerolls attack against players for to determine outcome. So um, uh, it can either do half or it can do uh, zero. So uh, that kind of thing. And, and actually, I'm sorry, I'm reading it kind of lousy, but. Um, they can either hit reduces to half damage, miss reduces all damage to a max of 15. So uh, that's a daily power they'll get to use. I'm not big. I think DM Johnny did a good video on this, and maybe I'll, I'll do a follow-up to it. But um, there was a video response because I really, really wanted to give him some ideas for his game. But I rarely give permanent bonus items out as treasure. Uh, I just don't like doing that. It really can create havoc with balance in the game. So those are rare occasions. But I do give lots of daily powers, 
um, one-off like uses and doses and that kind of thing because those don't those are those are split up among the group and they don't create too much trouble so this is just a daily uh, and Zoe gave me a great idea about how you take encounter powers or use a lot of fort save stuff or the different saves to create effects on items so I appreciate Zoe's help and me figure that out too but to, so there's our pendant all right and then um, I'm going to intersperse some skeletons. Get my big meat hooks out there. So here's the uh, little skeleton pile. Try to put them. Ooh, I painted that up nice and clean. I think I in a previous blog post I showed you guys how I did that. But I'll put a few of these skeleton piles to show people who didn't make it through the maze. And there's a little um, water thing in there. So I just took a uh, Gale Force 9 plain old brown base, painted it uh, with a blue put on that Vallejo water effect um, and then took an alternate Vallejo color just to show and that's just going to be a little pool of water that's sitting right there. Okay guys, so let's talk about the uh, monsters we're going to use in this uh, hedge maze uh, game board. So first one is the uh, Howling Hag. There she is. Look at that. That's a great miniature. Used her uh, and some old uh, Friday Night Strike kind of things, but uh, that is just a great looking fig. Great face. Look at that hair. Ugly bitch. Right. She'd be fun to kill. So the old Howling Hag, we're going to keep her in the course line of monsters as it were. Then there's some Arborine um, uh, style monsters here, and those are medium natural humanoid plant kind of things, and Wizards does have some uh, nice choices there. Uh, this is a Elder Wise Watcher, something like that. Uh, this is a rare, though, hard to find. Um, look at the detail on that guy, though. Phew, my. Just beautiful. Um, but I'm going to use him as the uh, the Watcher, which is a level 7 Lurker in the encounter. So we can keep him. Um, for the Arboreen uh, Reapers, we're going to use some... Look at these guys. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. Get them all in frame here. Uh, so these are some Dryad uh, Wood Elf uh, fan Warhammer uh, Fantasy uh, metal figs that I got from the Gamers Inn uh, display case. And um, someone had done, the, done me the favor of painting them up, and that's great news because I am uh, not good at painting uh, miniatures. But then I just took them and I just uh, rebased them. Or I should say I covered the bases because they weren't based. And so I put some tree bark uh, flock on there and some wooden scenic uh, little log pieces and some army painter tufts, stuff like that. I'm going to use these guys as my uh, soldiers in the encounter. And I'm going to do this cool thing where... What's up, little fella? Hey, little buddy. Um, uh, That's a twig blight. That's another... Uh, Wizards of Mini, but I'm going to do this uh, power where if the party hits one of these Arborine uh, baddies for too much damage, I'll probably, I haven't figured it out exactly yet, but let's say maybe it's like 15 at a time or something like that. If they do so, they're going to break off big pieces of branch, and that's going to turn into these little twig bite minions. So damage will do them poorly, as it were. And so uh, that's how I'm going to incorporate. I love putting minions in an encounter, especially with a big party. We have a group of six, and so that really changes all the dynamics of the combat. But uh, So I'm going to put the twig lights in there. I have to actually get a few more of these guys, but I've got a few, but I've got to order some more. But uh, So I'm going to tie those to these guys. Okay, so back these guys up here. And then the last one, my watchers are shedding. The last one is that uh, the module calls for a boar, and um, uh, we already fought a boar in uh, Thunderspire Labyrinth, so I'm switching it out to a dire bear. And the, uh, the bear is, um, uh, look at that, he's just got great features and size, there's his bum. Right. But uh, this is what's going to be sitting at that pool, drinking the water and coming at them. So they haven't fought a dire bear yet, so I'm going to do this instead. I'm always trying to pick monsters that they haven't fought previously. I have a massive minis collection. There's not much point in putting out the same minis over and over again, so I'm always trying to mix it up and 
try different monsters and creatures. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah it's a good boy. Yeah. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the monsters uh, in the game. So, hey, let's go to the game board. Okay, guys. So here is the uh, game board uh, all completed up, and I'm going to try to do some different cam camera angles here. But this is just as high as I can stand on a chair without shaking too much, so you can see the whole thing. So, see the very top there? That's where the group comes in, and then the very bottom here behind the uh, bear. That's where the group is going to go out, and then there's also an exit to the uh, far left. But um, uh, so this is the board, right? And you can see that. Um, I got all my difficult terrain on there. I got my taller hedges on the very ends of the board to give it depth. My uh, 15 millimeter wargaming hedges are uh, scattered throughout so that everybody can see everything. I intermixed a few taller games workshop hedges in there to provide a intermittent uh, depth and uh, you know kind of raise the stakes a little bit, but uh, not too bad, huh? And then just drop that on a uh, piezo uh, flip mat. Um, they have the old dual sided ones so that worked out really good and then I dropped in some plants um, in a few spots to you know show overgrowth in a few areas but uh, that's what it looks like from uh, if you're kind of standing above it okay so I'm gonna give you some different panned in looks here just so you can uh, see it at more eye level but um, as you can kind of tell there's plenty of uh, spots there for the group to kind of weave in and out and uh, I dropped my difficult terrain spots in there let's see how we can all be sitting down at the table and moving our minis and not have to worry too much about um, if everybody can see so that's kind of the top left move here's the center this is where they're trying to get to, and I haven't even really thought of any uh, cool powers on the, that water yet, but I'll think of something. There's our bear, just so you can see him. Uh, right? So see kind of how the I've dropped in a few taller hedges just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Okay. And here's the top right kind of side. And see, the group's going to be coming down these hallways. Now, the other important thing is I'm going to put this down as they walk through it. I'm revealing terrain as they go. This won't be preset. The board will pretty much be clear, and I'm just going to be giving them line of sight terrain as they go. That's a huge perk and fun thing about making 3D game boards is I lay down the terrain as I go, or I cover it up with um, uh, just black cloth. But in this particular case, Maybe I will use black cloth. I'm not sure. But my first intention is to just drop it as I go. So what I do is I take a series of photos, black and white photos, and I print them out, and then I have them as reference. And then uh, as the group travels, that helps me kind of figure out where the terrain is. But I, I'm definitely going to reveal as they walk through it. But uh, see, and then um, our dryad, uh, our arboring uh, figs here, these guys actually, they ignore difficult terrain. And they can go through a hedge. So they can literally come right through here um, and go. And then any places where it's enclosed, like at the top here, this, this guy right here, um, they have secret doors in these where they can pop out and attack. So um, I probably actually need to put this guy right here. Yeah. Um, that's how that's going to work. And then this is one way out. A little door there. Isn't that funny? And then this is where the group comes in. Right at the top. But they're pretty much only going to see the very first hedge and just down the line kind of thing. So I'm going to try to make it as mysterious as possible. Okay. That's kind of it, guys. I'm proud of this one. This was a lot of thinking. But uh, I think it turned out pretty good. So, hey, that's how you make a D&D &D, uh, hedge maze. Be sure to uh, check us out on Facebook. Um, talk to me on Twitter. Uh, watch our uh, 
uh, these videos and don't forget the weekly blog because all the stuff we make and show we put in detailed steps even the painting steps to kind of help you guys make your own terrain and get into the hobby because uh, um, everything's easier if you got someone to uh, help you show how to make the stuff and I encourage you guys to um, watch other channels like uh, DM Scotty, uh, DMG, um, PhD and D, Dungeon Master Johnny, the list goes on and on. But uh, hey, happy gaming. The woman was a dream I had, though rather hard to keep. For when my eyes were watching her as they closed, and I was still asleep. For when my hand was holding hers, she whispered words and I awoke. And faintly bouncing around the room, the echo of whomever spoke. And I awoke, and faintly bouncing around the room, the echo of whomever spoke. The place I sought was far beneath the surface of the sea. My sight was poor, but I was sure the sirens sang this song for me. They dance above me as I sing. I see them through a crystal haze. And hear their sweet sound bouncing round the never-ending coral maze. The crystal haze. And hear them bouncing round the room. hands in the shot and it ruins it <laughs> all right here we go